Hey guys, I'm getting this set up here. Today we're in the living room because we're going to be spinning and all sorts of stuff. What wheel do I want to use? I want to use this one. It's easier to see. Put on that. Huh? You can put fresh bobbin on that. I have fresh bobbin on there already. I'm going to pull it off. Show people. I have a fresh bobbin. See? Okay. I got dangerous tools. You got all the dangerous tools? I do. Excellent. I like it. And I'm not stabbing myself. Not stabbing yourself? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get my tension-y, tidy thing on here. All right. Ooh, so, I, oh, no! You just lost all the wool. I did. Okay, so we washed our wool. We washed our wool. And we're having a hurricane. Not really, because we don't have We don't have coast. hurricanes, but we can say we have hurricanes. It feels like a hurricane. It, it, it's very it, cold. Other place, it would be a hurricane. We have two red triangle flags out. Yep. We can share that picture with you later. Yep. Triangle flags happen a lot here. They evidently don't happen on the East Coast, says Shelly. At least not in Florida. No. I think they tell people to go away when that happens. Okay, they we're just getting the square flags, which we don't have square flags. No, I don't know like why. very close to you so we can be all in oh, the camera at the same time. Right. right, okay. Right, got... because we have to show them how to do this. Right, okay. All responsible-like. Right, and then making sure we have a good view here. All responsible-like. Ow, okay. <laughs> Stab yourself, kind of. A little bit. I didn't stab myself. I poked. Okay. okay. So I I made a few little birds' nests for Heather yesterday. Right, because I do the spinning part. She does the prepping part. And yeah. And this takes a little longer than that. Right. So so while she's showing that. Now, Romney, as we learned, is a long wool. This one is a rather short version of the long wool because it is a lamb's fleece. So it makes it a little harder to comb. Right, but it makes it a softer, it's really a soft yarn. The information we posted yesterday, you'll see um, Romney is is outerwear to rugs. Um, this is a I classify fleece. it. I would never make a rug out of Romney. I know. We've had our hands on some Romneys. Okay, there. some Romney. This is Most not... Hand spinner flock Romneys. I would not make a run. No, which is what we mostly have in the States. Right. We have very angry puppies. We lock them in the box. Yep. They're actually not angry. They're wrestling. They sound okay. kind of like pigs right now. They like do. Bears. I'm going to turn this to the side so you guys can see it. Okay. Can you guys see my hands? I can do this. Can you? Yep. I totally can. Are you going to use a for short forward draw or are you going to long draw? I'm going draw? to show them both. Okay. Okay. So these are our combed Romney. Little, little Romney nests. Now I'm making more. As you can see, I am just going, I'm just, I'm kind of just putting it on just, just very lightly onto the combs. Right. Um, we did, we should combs. So now if I was going to day. forward draw this with her combing. I literally just pull it forward. Now when I forward draw, this is a really cool, funky angle to have this poor little wheel up. Um, the thing that I can control the most is I can control how fine I make this. If I'm gonna make a really crazy fine lace weight, like that, I'm gonna forward draw so I lose the my yarn because I'm at this angle. So that I can make some crazy shawl. Right. With like lots of open lace. Right. Or that you could totally wear Little House on the Prairie style. Right. I totally could do that. Those are ends off my comb from yesterday. Those are ends off your comb from yesterday? Yep. Okay. I'll show them that again when we. So what, and Romney really likes to be laced. Romney does like to be laced. Romney, as I was saying the other day, does not like to be art yarn. I spun some. I had somebody spin some. But it some. does make a lovely bulky yarn, though. It does. 
just not thick and thin or fancy. Well, and again, when people would think about the bulky yarn from before, you would actually, honestly, their bulky yarn would have been many, 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 many plies of, thin of yarn. something like this. Or right. thinner. This is, um, I forgot my name gauge. This is a really thin, fine yarn. So again, you mean I'm like frog hair. Which I is don't like know what I classify as frog no, hair. It's it it might get there. So this is like I'm saying. Frog hair. If for those of you who don't know, shh, frog is hair is kind of a term. You know, it's a it's a, it's only as thick as a uh, the hair on a frog's back. Right. They are very. <laughs> hair peeling. Hi, Tammy. We are just getting set up here. Danielle so, is combing. I'm combing. Yeah, I'm just I'm putting it on. I'm loading my comb. And this is some previously combed of the of top the comb top robing or the Romney. Uh, and we Romney. were talking about how this I'm doing a short forward draw, which is allowing me to get a very fine lace. And we're gonna stop in a minute as soon as I get this part done, and we'll show you what that looks like on the wheel short forward draw means that my in my case I spin with my left hand forward everybody's different um so I'm literally just pulling it forward and drafting with my left hand and I can control very carefully how much um uh, what my diameter of the fiber is I'm not spinning in a hurry I'm just kind of gently spinning along here I have my comb loaded that just looks. I am nowhere high. near Heather's face. <laughs> She's really. Close. Okay, so I am not. I'm still like two feet away. That's not the dangerous end. This is the one I'm like. Wee! Don't stand behind me. I am just combing, <coughs> like you would comb somebody's hair, kind of at the tips, and then and you don't want to poke your. She is so in. dangerous. It's not even funny. Oh like, my gosh. Like, I could like get killed here, okay? She's so not gonna get killed here today. I'm turning it so you guys can see. I'm it I'm not gonna be all <laughs> You know <laughs> just, your name's not on the lease or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so da, 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 da. And then I'm flipping it over so I can go from the other direction because that's what you can do. I'm not sure if you can hear it. I'm you run your tines against each other when you get down to the very end. They are so angry at us. Angry puppies because we You know, the puppies so are getting teenager, okay? I know. They were all they were so cute a month ago. Okay, so then I'm gonna pack that down. This didn't come out this section. I just tacked it down. That's your combing waist. This is my combing waist. As I can pull it. it off now or I can leave it. Now, if you're a felter or... Or you make dryer balls for the fun of it. That's totally... This is waste. totally great. Um, it's not necessarily even bad fiber. I no. will. I have no problem dizzing this off. Um, it's the stuff that stays on the back of your combs back here that you don't want. This stuff is garbage more or less. I can't see Tammy's words. I can't. I'm reading them. Okay. Over here. She says your laugh is wicked. <laughs> Practice. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm fluffing it up again on my other comb. And I'm going to comb it back onto the other comb. I have some that is yeah. So you want to do this Let's do it three times. And while she's doing that, <coughs> so when I am spinning this, if I'm going to make real lace yarn like this and I'm going to leave it and I'm going to use forward draw, I actually prefer to leave a little tiny bit of lanolin in my fleece. That doesn't a mean sticky. a lot. It's not even sticky. It's I can sticky. feel it in my fingers. It makes your fingers soft. The reason that, that that I like that is because I think it makes a smoother lace. Um, that goes back to old prep. When people used to spin, especially long wools, not fine wools, 
Time wolves are a whole different ballgame. A whole different game. Um, we're going to cover those in the coming weeks. They would actually leave lanolin in and they would spin in the grease because it makes your items more waterproof. And if I'm going to be spinning this for for my barn coat, barn coat, or or I was going to say for an Irish sweater, you an English fisherman's sweater. <laughs> Fisherman's There's a sweater. Whole story on fish there is. sweaters. There is. We'll tell that. I would want the lanolin in here because it keeps it more waterproof. And they would actually re lanolinize things as they went. Now, as I'm spinning it, I don't really need that much. But this does have just a slight amount of lanolin in it. And that's okay. Um, yes, we will show how to load the combs again. Because Tammy didn't see. So when you load back yeah. or with the next pass. Okay, so this is my first, is a short draw, short forward draw, lace weight. So I always ply my yarn back on itself slightly so you can see. And that's how it's going to be. And I'll show you guys here. That, I can't get rid of my words, it's really hard for me to see. That is what I have on the bobbin. You can see how fine it is. And it's very consistent. This Romney really likes that. This could be like literally an entire shawl or sweater in like a 10 ply sweater thing. Like, totally the do that. like the Irish sweaters. So if you are going to, if you decide you want to play, play with spinning in the grease, you do want to. There is a prep to it. It's not just spinning no. the dirty wool. No, there's no. not. When there is a prep now, when I started spinning, here, let me tell you when I started spinning. Yeah. When I started spinning and there was no internet, there were no books on spinning, there's literally no internet, okay? Um, we started spinning. I was handed a bag of raw wool and a spinning wheel and said, you just take this home and you card the wool, you don't have to wash it. That is how people used to do it. They would spin in the grease grease. And it was, um, I learned how to spin that way. It does actually help your yarn stay together. You never quite get rid of the lanolin in your yarn. You never so quite you get rid are, of the dirt either. You know, it wasn't that dirty. It, I mean, it gets dirty on your fingers a little bit, but it was shocking at how clean the lanolin, I think that the grease keeps them cleaner. It sounds weird. Um, so when we did, now, when we wash now, you can cold water soak, which yes. gets the dirt, the dirt and stuff out. But there are, there's also, but it some, leaves the grease, but it leaves all, all the, the grease. grease in. Um, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually do a long draw. Okay. And while she's doing that, I am dizzing, which we showed you that the other day. I, I pulled up a little bit of wool here. Okay, pulled it through my buttonhole, and I push it down to the end, and I grab the wool, and I pull my wool up. Push my button down, grab the wool, pull my wool up. And I will do that all the way across my combs. Okay. So up, and push the button down, pull it up, and push my button down. I'm using a button. Um, there are people who use washers. Um, you can actually get dizzes, really pretty You ones. can get really pretty dizzes. You can make really pretty dizzes. You know, a lot of people used to make them out of like a cap, <coughs> like a water, like a soda cap, and you just poke a hole. Yeah. Kind of the whatever size you want. Whatever size you want. This is slightly smaller than an eraser. The larger the hole, the fatter your roving is. Um, there are some really tiny ones out there. Tiny, tiny, tiny dis. Yeah, and some people will dis their roving twice or three times. You can take it yep. through the big hole and then the littler oh, hole and then the littlest hole. It depends on how much you like to prep and what you really want your fiber to be. Um, everything is different. And... 
So she does that and I'm long drawing here. If this rule was longer, I would actually not need to use my front hand at all. As it is, I'm just using my front hand to stabilize and I'm pulling it up from behind. And this keeps the fibers aligned, but I'm not getting maybe quite as fine because I don't have quite as much control. Um, but it's actually a faster way. You can see how much faster this one is going and not just because it's slightly heavier but because it's literally a faster way. It is harder on your shoulders. Oh, it I can't imagine how women used to spin. That one woman in California that for um, Spinzilla does bazillions of yards this way. Yeah. Okay, so I just got that off. It's all nice and straight and even. I'm going to hand it to Heather. She's going to keep spinning. I am left with this on my combs. This is not bad fiber. It's just short. This is the shorter bits, shorter than everything else. But the, my fiber was out here. I took all the long fiber is basically what happened. And this doesn't really want to come out very well. Um, I'd have to pull really hard, which is dangerous. We don't really want to pull that it's hard on close. our combs. So you're left with this. This is not really that bad. I can card this. Right. I could do very woolen, fluffy yarn with it later. Yeah, we'll leave that over here for that. Or you can make it into a bat. Or you can make it into a bat. Or, or a you could ball. make it into a dryer ball. Or here's another. We'll spin it. That's from yesterday. That's from yesterday. Uh -huh. Okay, and I have a little bit more for on my other comb. So I'm going to take that off too. And I will show you how to load them again. And this is while she's getting fiber. So this is the long draw fiber. And what's really cool here, I can show you guys. I remember to move it. All right, so this is my long draw and that's my, sh and that's my short forward draw. So you can see the short forward draw is maybe a little bit smoother. These are both worsted yarns, but it's a little bit smoother to do the short. So I'm going to do another section of short forward draw here. While well, she lo loads the okay. cards, which I have totally. There we go. Yep. Turn okay. Up. Loading the combs. I have my fiber. My cut end is up. I like doing my cut end because it helps. Yeah. I also fluff my cut end. Um, you can tell the cut ends sometimes get a little compacted from the clippers. Um, like this doesn't have second cuts, but so some people will flick them with the dog brush before. I just kind of pull them through the cones all crazy like. That way they don't get stuck and you don't end up with as much waste. Right. Just because it's gummed up a little bit does not mean that it's bad wool. It's just not perfect. Well, it's perfectly fine. It's just stuck together. Right. So I grab them by the tips. And I just kind of, I use my combs to kind of comb out the end. And then I just put it on. I don't know, comb it down and leave it. If I'm not worried about that, I can just seriously just grab a handful and this is normally what I do because prep is very time consuming and some people live to prep some people live to prep and there's nothing wrong that's no, awesome what you it's to wonderful prep. I don't live to prep nope I would rather spin it so I just kind of tend to go fast and and I don't care how much waste I get I'll do something else with it so I'm just I seriously you don't you get close with your fingers but you don't want to stab yourself end of story right. that's pretty much how it goes with coming so then I'm loaded you only do half your comb you don't fill it all the way up to your tips if I was to pack this all down I only have that much wool on it like seriously it's hardly any wool um 
but you leave it kind of fluffy and you only fill, you know, you don't want to fill all the way up to the top of your combs. And you don't want it packed tight. And then starting just like before, you go through and you just catch the tips. And pull it out. So the whole game is to go from one car, one comb to the other comb. And then other direction. And that is it. And I'm left with this waste. That's part of combing is you have waste. Um, and it freaks some people out a lot. And they're like, what do I do with all this waste? Well, you get creative. And it all depends on how how you clean your fleece is on right. what you do with your waste. Some waste is only good for, I have processed some really dirty fleeces and the waste is seriously only good for compost. Right. Some waste like this waste is perfectly spinnable. Exactly. Yeah, and it just depends on, and it depends really on who you are as to whether or not some people want to use everything. You could totally make an awesome, even if you were combing an entire fleece, you could make a totally cool woolen yarn with your waist. Oh, you and then totally use it could. as a trim for your sweater. Oh, or yeah, like your whatever. cuffs or whatever. Right. Yeah, I mean, you could needle felt it into dog toys. You could, I mean, seriously, do anything with it. It's yeah. really up to you on how much you feel you need to use. We have, we all start with fleece and we all want, we all use every single bit of it. And when you first start processing your fleece, you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't throw anything away. And you're going to spend like two hours on a little tiny section of fleece one day that you got this really, really pretty, but it's completely filled with VM because the sheep carried wool, like <laughs> his yarn. name was Wallace and Wallace he carried, and the, carried, carried the, the flakes of hay on his back. Okay. And, and it was awful. And it was awful. And you, but you love the fleece and you want that fleece and you're going to use it no matter what. And then you get to the point where you're like, yeah, mm. there's more pretty fleece in the world. Yep. And then you get to the point where you can identify like this is a really dirty fleece, but it's a beautiful fleece. And it's worth it. And it's not even dirt. So, it's not even the end. See, I, I have that much left behind. It's not going to come off this comes. So I'm going to throw that at Heather. That's going to go in that pile over there. I'm going to diz this off and then we'll move on to carding, which um, is so much faster. It gives you a completely different mm -hmm. style yarn though. It does. So again, I'm just taking the tip. I'm winding it up. I'm making yarn. I'm remaking yarn. Taking. I have this little button. They're like little glass buttons. I have holes. See? See, that's all the bigger the hole is. It's not very big. <clears throat> and then, um, and then it goes in. Button goes down towards the tines. I pinch right behind the button and I pull it up. And then the button goes all the way down behind the tines. Pinch and pull. Push, pinch, and pull. Right. And when you're spinning on a fleece or on a... When I you're just spinning broke it off here. Yarn, land. You broke yarn it. and land. When I you're did. spinning, you will hit a sweet spot with your fleece. Now you should eventually be able to spin so that you can make any fleece be anything you want it to be. Okay, that's the goal. You own the yarn. And you own the wool, you own the fleece, you, you own the whole you, process. You tell that fleece what you want it to be. Um, that takes years. That does to be take able years. to do that. And a lot of confidence. Let's say. I think once you can make silk bulky. <sighs> yeah, or 
anything. I don't know. It just takes a lot of confidence, and it takes it does. being able to sit there and, and really think through what you're going to do with it. Okay, now I have hit the sweet spot with this fleece, where this fleece likes to be this specific diameter, this amount of twist. This is what this, <laughs> what the heck just fell off my wheel? I have no clue we where that We didn't make came. this wheel well, I guess. No, we didn't build this wheel. <laughs> this wheel, it's a, oh, it's, it's your tightener from somewhere. Well, oh, that's all right. It could the stay down there for until, you know, nothing's falling apart. The wheel didn't blow up at me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this wheel <coughs> came to us pre-built from the factory. Kind of. Well, you know, yeah, it's this part right here. It's the flyer bolt. Well, how about you put that back in? Because I have to stop. Well, yeah. <sighs> I want to stop. You don't want to stop. It, go? it goes underneath. I think underneath here. It's made to come out so that you can replace it with the giant one that I needed to order and I didn't order for this wheel. It came pre-built. And evidently See, the always... wheel the Evidently man... the wheel feels like it should have a bulky flyer on it. She says that she was spinning our yarn the other day. She was being Okay, like, see. Spinning. I'm left with this much on on this comb. See. It looks like a lot. It really does, um, but it's it's okay. See, it's it's not bad wool. It's just not perfect. That's why combed top is so sought after by some spinners because it's amazing. Um, because it's the it's top. It's the top. Mm. It's the cream of the crop. It is the top. The top. The top percentage of that fleece so we've gotten the top and now and my cart here stuff stuck in my carters <laughs> pull that out now they've been in storage i haven't been prepping fleece since i moved to the wet no yeah, because we have magic companies that do that for us and it takes here's more of that stuff that I off my more fuzzies. Yeah. Okay. It, we went through the glass door. <laughs> okay, the sliding glass door. We used the sliding glass door and the wool was next to it, drying. <laughs> and it's a hurricane outside, which meant the hurricane came inside, which means all the wool went on the floor and commingled all across the floor. So there's good wool and bad wool. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. It's she came back in. She's like, what happened? Heather's As I'm like, like down behind the glass case, yeah. picking up stuff off the floor. Whoa. And I'm like, some of just this a is little the, issue. Some of this is the wet stuff. Okay, so uh, we, I had never thought of this ever in my life. On one of the spinning groups, somebody went, hey, my wool's not drying and I don't dehydrate bananas anymore. So they busted out their food dehydrator, and they've been using it to dry their wool. <coughs> if you live in a wet climate, and you have a food dehydrator just hanging out. Okay, I bought a closet for that that's like a giant closed dehydrator. Right, but most of us don't have the need, need for a giant closed dehydrator. I don't know what your guys' problem is. Okay, very similar to loading my combs. I'm just going to take my wool and head it onto the... Cards. My giant clothes dehydrator gets stuff dry in like three hours. Uh, there's so magic. Food in this bowl. Well, food as in um, VM. Vegetative matter. The sheep ate breakfast? Yes, this sheep ate hay. It is green. Uh, <laughs> it's good to know. I'd rather them feed their sheep than not. I would too. I'm always sad when the sheep don't get fed. Um, we buy from people who only feed sheep, so any fleece you get from us we'll have has, food has, we'll show you that. Okay, so that was just a handful, and I just put it on there. Ooh, it's fancy. It's really ugly right now. See, look, it's lumpy. I can't see all Tammy's words. Was, she said, Ted said thank you was the last thing she said. Okay. Unless it's not showing. 
Okay. I have it set up on the computer over here. All responsible. The computer's so good. Okay, so I'm going to And I'm long drawing as she's doing this, by the way. Take the other one. And I am going to set this on my leg, and you guys can see it. I can't see it because there's words. But you do this rocking motion, but you don't drag your combs, cards, through the teeth. It's kind of like grinding your own teeth. We don't grind teeth. It's bad. It makes my jaw hurt just saying that. I know. It makes my teeth hurt, too. <laughs> I know. It's awesome. The noise. You know that noise? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope every single person that watches this video gets a little shiver. shiver. Because that's what dragging the teeth on combs, cards, does, does to me, too. Um, so, I'm... Just, what do our kids do now with like they don't have nails on a chalkboard anymore? They wouldn't even know what that really meant. Luke ground his teeth and it drove me nuts. Same. Okay, so I'm. It's like petting a cat. And gently. I go gently, you know. Otherwise, the cat bites you. Right, and never backwards, and never, never this way. Because they don't, that's like petting the cat backwards. It's like, it's just literally like that. Um, so, I went one way, now I'm doing the other way. And this takes three or four passes too. Everything with prepping wool takes three or four passes. Three or four washes, three or four passes. passes. Three or four days to dry. Three or four shots of vodka. <laughs> more fun the more shots you take more artistic your yarn gets <laughs> I know. this will not get your second cuts out which we talked about that briefly last yep. time second cuts are the little teeny tiny pieces in your wool this one has second cuts here we go you know there's very few fleeces and very few shears that don't get second cuts in the fleece. Right. Seriously. Unless you, have, unless you buy a hand shear fleece, and I'm talking clips with, with the with hand clippy, clippers. clippies that go like this. And, and then they, and take, they take the little, little locks, locks and, and they, they lay them down. There's, you will have second cuts in your fleeces. The second cuts on this fleece, for some reason, are black. The ones that I've been finding. I know. It's almost like it was like the it's leg little wool leg wool. Or, 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 oh, here's some white. Okay, so I'm going to pull these had second cuts out. I, Every time it got to a spot that was pretty colored, the fleece, the, the fleece, the sheep jumped. jumped to, I, don't, <laughs> I have no clue. I have no clue, but <coughs> I have found little bits of second cuts in here. It's not the end of the world. But I think they drop out as you spin it. We'll show you how that works. But if you hate them and you really want smooth yarn, like really, really want smooth yarn, you're going to comb your yarn. Um, because you will never, we'll show you with the, with the carded. Okay, so here are the second cuts that I just found in that little, the, obviously that piece had a lot of them. But see, they're tiny little short pieces of wool. You will even find this in commercial top if you dissect commercial top. I found it that last braid I spun. Had a lot of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through on how they process the where you're at. I think it depends on where their your braids happen to be at on the processing thing when you get your wool process. I find them most in silk. Yes. Yes. Which will cover that when we do silk. I find a lot in alpaca. <laughs> find a lot to be desired in alpaca. We'll cover that in the we'll alpaca land. We'll cover that in alpaca classes. Um, so, went through. See, it's much prettier. I think that was my second pass? Yeah, that was your second pass. Okay, so that was my second pass, and it's much prettier than my first, obviously. But I'm going to keep going for one more pass. Because I want this nice and smooth. And if you're going along, see there's a second cut in there. In my card. I can pull it right now. <coughs> but but there, there's others that have slipped on by. So I've gone through three times. I've made a roll. Now I'm going to make a roll egg. That's what it's called. I love roll eggs. 
they're fun to spin from. They're fluffy. Okay, so I folding it over on itself and now I'm just gonna roll it off. Because it's a roll leg, it rolls off. If we were doing this with the funny little tiny cotton hand carters, which we don't do cotton, it would be considered a puny. Yes. And you use a pencil. You lay like a dowel or a pencil and you roll it onto that because it's short staple and it falls apart. So there's a roll leg. Okay, and I'm on my last, whoops, bit of carded of- Your last card's cold. nest. And then I'll show you guys because I've done two and two one, and two, two forward one. and two back. Ooh, this has some yummy stuff in it. I didn't wash that piece very good. I pulled it out. It was kind of grody. <laughs> it might have had some poo on it. Mm -hmm. Or it was, okay, so a lot of times you'll buy fleece, and I've seen this from my shepherd slash shearer extraordinaire like she's one of like the strongest women I know like physically mentally I don't know she's a tough chick she is yeah okay so like she is like that chick you want on your side she, she takes them out she is a real she has second cousin on shearing whatever but she is a really good skirt as she shears shearer okay she doesn't sell garbage love her if you ever want a fleece an honest fleece um her name's Corey mcatee she sells an honest fleece um we buy most of them but yeah yeah if you ever get your hands on any of them because you know we didn't Anything buy it yeah 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 her fleeces are definitely something. Those are still wet little chunks. I'm going to take those out because wet wool does not card well. Um, she she takes all of the bad britch and everything out. Britch is what is around the butt, which has poop on it. You won't get that in your wool. You will, though, occasionally get armpits. Yep. Sheep sweat lanolin and some other oils it's really gross it's black and that's what's in their armpits and their leg pits they have they have two sets of armpits they have front armpits and back armpits right did you lose your end i did you just keep talking i lost your end i did it's great um so occasionally you'll get some of those and i have seen people go oh my gosh it's poop and because it's black because it's black because it gets dirty because they and also lay down to sleep right and in the oil dirt. in dirt caked oil turns black that's why your engine oil when it's used turns black um so they you know they're all oh my gosh there's poop in my wall poop isn't black no it's brown or green and speckly and it yeah. often has hay in it you know you will get that in poorly skirted skirted fleece and some shearers are really bad about that Oh, a lot of small head. shepherds are really bad. They'll say, "Not we didn't skirt. We didn't skirt. Heck, Corey will sometimes say, I have fleeces dirt cheap. I didn't skirt them. That means they weren't skirted <laughs> after she sheared. Right. Which means there will be armpits. There's a neck. Because when we buy a fleece, and when you buy a fleece from a store or from a fiber festival or whatever, we, we take it home and we skirt it again. No matter who you skirt. buy from, take it out of the bag and you skirt it again. Because you don't know what they're missing. Right. And they may not know because they've had, you know, 200 fleece that day or whatever. And they may have not hard skirted it either. A hard skirt is when you go around and you literally take like the four inches off the outside. The four inches along the belly, along the arms. 
and you take the neck off. Yeah. Depending upon that fleece and how that sheep was fed, a lot of times you take the midline out, mm -hmm. right down the spine, because as that Which fleece grows, yep. as that fleece grows, it starts to open up and fall open along the spine which creates this really awesome trough that they seem to, I don't know, somehow magically pack 14 With. tons of alfalfa leaves. And in. it is an But they were never fed any alfalfa, but right. they will find 14 tons of alfalfa leaves and pack into this bee. And that's the best fleece too, and it will make you sick to throw it away. Now, yes. if you were going to process it at home, sure. Sure, go for it. Go for it. Take that midline out. Feel free to wash it, prep it, dry it, comb it. You won't want to cart it. You You're not going to cart it because it's going to get all of that stuff embedded into it. You want to comb it. And that's going to be that fleece that um, you got a really screaming deal on. It doesn't want to be that thin. It does not want to be that thin. It's it very like clean. This way. It's very clean. Uh -huh. So it doesn't like being that thin. No, it doesn't like the back, the long draw. I keep the long drawing it out too far. That will be next week, the border luster, okay? We'll like to be long drawn. It's like, so spin me one way. Spin me round, right round like a record player. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys, actually, the long draw is spinning it thicker. Than the forward than draw. Than the forward draw. But I'm getting more twists in my forward. Okay, so this is, so like look in two places at once here. Okay, so this is the long see. draw, you know, and this is the forward draw. So you can see the forward draw, you have to use a mouse. It's not, oh it's not a phone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she was just trying. Was you know, really my cute. computer, I can do that with. I know, okay. And it's still like way behind. It'll just catch up. We are so okay. lagging. We so this is on. Um, this is Shh. the. Oh. This is the forward draw here. And shh, no. And then this is the long draw. So this one I'm not getting quite as much twist in. This one has more twist, but I like this look better. This is what this fleece wants to be as a short forward draw. In the from the combs even. Trade spots. Alright, so now we're gonna spin it from the other. And let's get on this white. Ah! Aria. She's a bad dog. Bad dog today. We're tired. <sighs> tired of being so tired. Tired of being locked up. They, for the 20 minutes they've been in there. It's so awful, I tell you. Okay, so now I've got my roll leg. <coughs> so this is going to be a more woolen yarn. It's Can actually going to end up bobbing. I know. Uh, yeah, there's a bobbin right there. Because then we can, then we can, oh, I can, so you have, can show. I can have you draft it off. Oh. Draft okay. it off. And then we can be all like, look, this was this all magical and responsible. -like. Wow. That would be really responsible. I know. She's like taking it like way above. I'm still on cold bins. I can't handle that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I, guys, I'm helping you. I just broke your leader. You just broke the leader. Why There's... can't you spin on the rows? I got one here. I can. It'll be then on two different wheels, but I can. The rose has actually has an empty bobbin on it. Okay, we're going to do, yeah, we're, we're moving over to wheels. a different wheel. This is why we have 74 wheels in the yarn shop. Okay, that might be an exaggeration. This is why we have all the wheels at home Ooh. here. Yep. Okay. Hi, this is the Rose. That was the Sonata. We'll visit back to the Sonata here in just a little bit when I have Heather go back to a different prep. Right. Or something. I will, okay, so because I'm I want you to spin it differently yet again, which is my favorite way to spin Romney, or I'll spin the Romney. What are you, okay. Hi, spin Romney from the cloud. Yes, well, that's what I was going to do with the fuzzies. The, 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 yeah. That stuff. That stuff. Yeah. But that's my favorite way to spin Romney, actually. I know that seems so weird, but. Not really. 
I actually can't tell much of a difference between it and if I card it when I spin it like that. Um, there's a big difference in the comb. This is going to be... It's a big okay. difference in the comb to the carded. So that is a... That is... The, the first bobbin is worsted. Really, that's a worsted yarn. It's Everything's a true aligned. worsted. Yep. Um, this so is a this woolen. Is a, this is a semi-worsted. Is it turning into it's, a this semi? This is what it's going to be because it's got enough fibers aligned and because of how I'm doing it and then we will do a true worsted or woolen I mean a true woolen uh, from our cloud is what's going to end up happening I have to make this wool for it out there we go Maybe you guys can see my hands or not nope you can't because that's what you guys well I could I could yeah. be um, the, the fun camera person I can turn my I can angle my wheels you I'm good at this. You don't want me to be the fun camera no, person? No, because you drop them. Drop them. I make them dizzy. Grandma me <laughs> is great in our classes. Someday we'll have enough money if we stop buying wool that we'll be able to afford that gimbal thing. Gimbals are so cool, guys. That, that's a thing that if you If anybody on wants camera, to buy us a present. That would be a great one. We could really use okay. a gimbal. So I'm doing this as a short... We wrong. learned what a gimbal was from the 4-H kids. We learn a lot from our 4-H kids. I think they teach us more than we've ever taught them. Aria, enough. Ruben's being good. He's sleeping. So she says he's touching her. She doesn't like to be touched anymore. No, he likes to snuggle. He really likes to snuggle his sister. Uh-huh. She really hates it. Um, we learned that yesterday. So, um, if you are lucky enough to have a drum carter. Yes, let's talk about drum carters and combs. Comb or the, 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 <laughs> the teeth thing. Pickers. Oh, pickers. Pickers okay. are scary. No, they're not scary. But we, I've seen a lot of people using pickers lately and over-processing their fleece. Because you don't need to pick every fleece. What do you this need to fleece? pick? Highly vegetated fleeces. Yes. That, really that dirty fleece. That really nice fleece that has, has the, bee the bee in it. it and, and it has 14 tons of alfalfa leaves in it. That one. That one you pick. Because what you're doing with a picker is opening up the lock structure, opening up those locks, and letting all the VM fall out. And then the fluffy wool falls out the other side. Right. This does not need picked. No. And if I was going to pick this, I would be just spinning from the cloud. She just pulled a little chunk of... I've, of, uh, I of pulled a second cut. Out. Second cut out. Because it showed up. Uh -huh. Because when they come up, and they poke out. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to be... As you prep and you learn how to spin, you learn... You get confidence and you can pick out stuff as you spin. That's why I don't prep a lot. I literally pick it out as I spin. There's My very favorite. few things that don't spin out. And when you spin, you okay, you're spinning from a V. You make a V with your fiber. A little triangle A thing. little triangle V thing. And so then, like, okay, there's a little piece of VM. I can see it because it comes out. Um, anything that is really dirty, Tammy, is what you use a picker on. I have used it on alpaca because alpaca tends to be really dusty. Because they bathe in the dirt and like also, a chinchilla. And then when you wash alpaca, it clumps. It does clump up. Which will, and so I would use a picker on alpaca. Um, I've used pickers on really dirty fleece. I've used pickers on angora after I've dyed it. Because the angora, key with again, pickers, you want your fleece to be really clean as far as oil-free. The yes. lanolin, it cannot be sticky. If it is sticky and you run it through a picker... All you do is rip the wool apart. I saw a person recently post a Corydale fleece. Corydale that is was oddly nappy. full of and lanolin. Corydale is just as lanolin y as most Fine merino wolf. or Fine more. Wolf. My gosh. I have washed Corydale 10 times and dyed it. Okay, 10 and times is an exaggeration. At least twice. Twice. And then twice dyed with it soap. with boiling water. Or nearly boiling water, and I still you can feel the lanolin in it when you spin it. Mm-hmm. And merinos can be like that. 
Cormos can be like that. Cormos awful. Cormos awful. Cormos it's amazing those, fleece. It's but amazing it's, fleece. But you it could pay me enough to process one by hand. Some people love it, but it's definitely that's a labor of love right there. And that's also <coughs> when you have a fleece like that. When you buy a fleece, you're going to lose weight on your fleece. Yes. And you're going to lose a lot of weight on a Cormo or a Corydale or a Merino. It's where, called shrinkage. Where this one, actually, you're not going to lose a lot of weight on it. You might lose 25%. This is my second cut. And you can see this one, in order to get it smooth, I have to do a little bit. And I've got a little bit more texture in this. Here and here. Because it is a semi worsted it is mm -hmm. not a true worsted right not everything is facing exactly magically the same most spinning that people do even yes. from comb top is semi worsted you have to be very careful to spin it actually a true worsted yes and you have to really it and takes really a long time to get a true worsted yeah and we don't really have to worry about stuff like that anymore no because, because we are spinning for pleasure we're not we're not going to make Irish, you know. Irish sweaters. Okay, okay so, they're so Irish sweaters. Okay, yeah. Which is a, a 10 story. ply yarn. 12 ply. 12? 12 ply yarn. So it's really ply thin. Yarn. Really thin so 12 plies. Thick. Um, yeah, I mean, like 12 plies. So ply. it makes like a worsted <laughs> yarn. Right. Aaron, probably an Aaron. We'll say it was an Aaron weight yarn, which is like a 10 wrap per inch yarn. It's I would a, bet. It's a thick yarn. So every year they would take these sweaters apart and re-knit them because it was faster to re-knit the sweater and repair any spots in it that were broken than it was Just to, to re -spin, spin the yarn the yarn and that's one of the reasons why they would have used so many plies is so that is, it was stronger right so when you think about it these fishermen out on the boats they would have had 12 plies of of lanolin -y, Smelly, very sticky yarn, yarn made out of something very similar to a Romney. Yes. And that was what they were. Then they would make every sweater had a different design on it. You see these beautiful yes. Irish sweater designs. It's for a very specific reason. And that reason. Each family had, had a different had design. Had their own design that they had made up. Because if the people fell off the boat and got eaten by the fish. Yeah. Their sweaters would survive because hello lanolin. The sweaters would wash up on shore with the remainder of the bodies. And they would be able to identify the bodies. <laughs> yeah. There's your creepy sweater fact of the day. Now, I was just thinking as we're saying this, it's interesting that the Salish community here. Which are the Native, the Native Americans. Americans. They made Salish sweaters very famously. Their Salish are one ply or two ply yarns. Made on a giant drop spindle, my spindle sword, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. I found somebody who's a, who is a wood carver who has studied the Salish style for a very long time. It is, like, it is his passion, is carving wood like the Salish did. And, um, and I, and my goal is to get him talk to him very nicely and making us a first spindle. we have to go to this this museum that's like five hours away in forks and forks we have washington to to, we have to go up there to the, not to see the vampires not to see the vampires we're gonna go to this museum which is supposed to be the best museum on salish fibers anywhere fiber arts yeah because jim the gentleman who who carves he was so excited when I started talking about the okay. Salish spinning. Uh-huh. Right. But they had single ply yarn. Uh-huh. Now, why would they have had single ply yarn? They didn't use wool. No. They used mountain goat and dog hair. Right. Would in have been their there. sweaters. And they only had wool toward the end of the 1800s. I, that might be completely wrong, and if I am, I apologize. But they did not have sheep over here for a really long a time. A really long time. So they would have... Like we learned, the Romneys did not show up here until, they, no until 1904. Right. So there they would have had... I'm they would have the used a single ply yarn, goat and dog are anywhere from six to eight times warmer than wool. 
they would also have not had the lanolin. So, but dog hair and goat are very hydrophobic. At least when I have messed with dog hair, it is. And the dog hair on my dogs don't like to get wet. The yeah, undercoat. The, the undercoat and the huskies are, it, it's a hollow shaft hair, very similar to Angora. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so I bet you that they did not need those 12 plies. No. He, um, also, the really cool thing about the Salish is they, they made blankets, too. And their warp for their blankets was cedar. Right. They spun they cedar. Ret, they, the, the, they would rut the cedar. Which just like we read it, um, Lin- red, lan- red, l- l- linen, 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 flax for linen, or um, uh, several other things. I've seen it done too on videos in Mexico when they did cactus. Yes, and which makes um, we still do that for ropes. Um, it's sisal. Yeah, this was like even different than that. It was really cool. Um, uh, you can do it with stinging nettles. Uh huh. And there's a few others that so. You- yeah. So they would have done that, and then they, yeah, and then they and used that. They used that as their warp, and then they, um, then they used the dog hair and mm. goat as, as the, their weft. Right. Someday you will see us out on the port, like we'll have found a cedar tree. It'll be a. Steep. We have those here. We do, and we will be like. So we're trying to do this, and it will be like this stinking awful mess right and we'll make the chinook observer because they'll be like you know port closed down thought it was dead fish no no there's no way it could smell as bad as tuna season i don't know plants smell awful when they rot well so do we'll 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 do it during tuna season right we'll just blame it on the cannery we'll be like i don't know what the cannery is doing down there speaking of stench as you guys go into this whole <laughs> thing of processing wool, you're, you're gonna, gonna you're gonna go. There has to be an easier way. There has to be an easier way, and you're gonna come across the remnant method. Don't do that. Okay, so that really badass tough woman that shears sheep, and I mean she has done it all. She she. Uh, her flock is down from two hundred and something head down to. Just over 150, I think, and she's just now starting lambing. I mean, that's a lot of sheep. It's a lot of sheep. Um, she's seen it all. She does her own vet work. I mean, really, she's seen it all. Um, when she goes, yeah, I was soaking a fleece, a cold soak, and I forgot about it, and it started to do that rennet thing. Is it rennet or suet? Suet. 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 So it's, it. it's so basically what you do is you take your fleece and you put it in cold water. A very dirty fleece and really dirty, like the armpits. And you and you seal it up in a it, Rubbermaid container, right, for like six weeks or something. Like a that. dark colored one, yeah. It's and then you leave it out in the sun. Uh huh. And you let it start to decompose, kind of. Right. Basically, it's decomposing, and it supposedly rots all the wool. It kills. It takes all the. It does not get rid of the lanolin. No, the bacteria in eat the, eats the dirt, oh, the dirt and the VM. But it does not eat the lanolin or the wool or the wool. So then you dump it out, and it smells like death. Or or the really brave people just like I don't know, keep it out, scoop it out, and then they add another fleece. Yeah, yeah, and you're supposed to use rainwater, supposedly. Right, because you can't use anything with chemicals in it. Right. Creek water, rainwater, something like that. Okay, when your badass shepherd friend goes, the o- there's only a few things in my life who's ever made my stomach run backwards. Run away. <laughs> you don't go there. A rotten fleece, it a does. fleece rotting in a pot of water. I'm sure it does work. I'm sure it does, too. The bacterial load in that water scares me. Oh, uh, my if gosh. You, if you do it, don't do it around pets or animals or kids. Because yeah, it really... because, like, that's, like, rank stuff. That's, like, you are growing botulism and tetanus and anthrax all in one pot. <laughs> I mean, you are asking for right. a really lovely Sleeping Beauty 
right masterpiece theater. Okay, so this is the semi worsted for ah forward draw. Hang on. There. You can see it's a little fluffier. A it's little. got a lot more air trapped in it. Is basically what I've done here. So instead of being a smooth really yarn, smooth it's got yarn. it's got the air trapped in it. Now I'm gonna try. Try might be the ultimate word here. To do one. I think you should just spin it the way it is. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Okay. It might actually do it on this wheel and I won't get so dramatically far. Okay. I was getting really into it. Okay. Have you decided not to get as into it now? I'm trying not to. If I'm going to, if I long draw, I tend to really long draw. And so when long drawing it this way, I'm actually though, again, it's a softer twist and I am doing, I'm, um, I am actually trapping even more air and it's even going to be fluffier than the first way. Oh, we totally got sidetracked. Sorry. What did we get sidetracked on? Like 14 subjects ago. Uh-huh. We were going to talk about drum carters. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we thought we talked about pickers and stuff. <laughs> Salish. Okay, so drum carters. Drum carters. If you're lucky enough to have a drum carter, what you are going to do with your wool, which they can't see me. No. Hi. Woo. Hi. Okay. You know, you could get the drum carter and you could show them. That Go. table scares me. It's all going to come collapsing <laughs> down and I'm take, going to end up having my fingers take chopped them in off. There. Take them in there with you. I'm going to end up with my fingers chopped you off and not. bloody. That happened the take other them day. In there with you. I had to give that lady a lesson on drum carding and it ate me. It did not eat you. You want to see? Them there's, there. there's blood. There was blood. Take them in there. Okay, guys. Heather left me with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, okay. I have a little bit of wool. Not a lot. And I have kind of a mess on the drum carter. And um, now let's see if I can find a spot to put you where you can see what I'm doing. So... Okay, let's see. Trying here. Look, ramped in the wool room. It's not like it's we're like it's meant to do this. We're. Mm, I have to move you down lower. Let's see if I can find a spot or not. Heather, I can't do this one-handed. Okay. So I'm turning around. I'm going to clean off my drum carter, which has a ton of wool on the liquor. This is your, this is your liquor. I, it okay. won't there, but okay. okay. So this is my liquor. Can you stand on the mic? The cross piece there and kind of stabilize it so it like I don't know doesn't take off and fall over. She's scared of this thing. I am not scared of the drum carter as much as I'm scared of the table launching it at me. Okay. Okay, so you have your wool, and that's what it comes out of the bath like. You really have to fluff it up before you put it on here. This is why people think that you need a picker. This is why people think you need a picker, because they think, oh, that'll be so much faster. Really, this it does not take that much time. And I'm ensuring my wool is not getting, like, totally thrashed. This is not an ultra-fine drum carter. It does not have the ultra-fine 90-whatever thing. TPI. DPI, but I have successfully carded all fleeces on this. Because you go slow. Right. Yeah. The whole key with drum carding is not to go fast. The, the, where it beats out hand carters is that I can fit two ounces of wool on here, but I, you know, I can't do it watching TV. So ignore all the pink. If I was truly going to change out fleeces, you would clean I would all that clean off. this off. I would clean this off. It would be all clean. There would be no pink. Speaking of which, you always go dark to light. Well, light to dark. Light when to dark when, when you make bats. 
like if I was going to make bats and I was going to do gray with a little something, and then and I play in the same color fam color family. Yeah, like this before I did the light pink had darker pink on it, and I didn't care if it mingled. Right. Okay, so your liquor tends to collect the little second Bits. cuts. Okay. So as I go around, it is going to, and I'm not going fast because if you go fast, that's how you Or if you feel it catching. Catching, yes. Stop and redo your fiber. Because big chunks do not like to fit through here. There is like, I think it's supposed to be like a, a business card width between them. This one is non-adjustable, so it is what it is. Um, but you go through and you, if you go fast, it rips your fleece apart and it gives you naps. But as you can see, I've already gone through all that fleece is on here now. Do you want to hand me the brown and pink? No. Yeah. Are you bat or the other bat? No. <laughs> the other bat, the one I gave as a lesson. Okay, so this is like mohair and... Border luster. Border luster. It's really great. I'm just adding everything to this. Okay, so this has already been through once, and I pulled it off, and I. it's not smooth. You can see it's been through. It's not smooth. You mm -mm. can see where those locks were. You just take small sections like this, and you spread them out again for their second time around, and you let it go. It very well, because you do not have the control with a drum carter that you do with hand carters. It can take you four or four, four or five times through to get a true. You can see that the VM back. does come out a little bit. A little bit, and if you really want to pull the VM out, you oh, can go for it. Yeah, there isn't anything stopping you from being as as picky as you want to be when it comes to your prep. You can do whatever you want with your prep. This is your prep to your heart's content. So, is my dog brush in here? I don't know. I don't know. It might be on that table. Nope, it's right over here. This is where I always hurt myself. Because it's my packer brush and it's falling apart and it doesn't work right anymore. So if I really wanted a smooth bow, I'm going to have to keep going. I'll have to take this off. I will have to repeat over and over and over and over. Because to get a truly smooth bat on a drum carter takes a lot of passes. A lot of passes, which... And if you were really going to do it right, I mean, like, really, really, really right, you would do one pass on a bigger drum carter on, like, a 72, and then you would move down to a 108. They don't make drum carter. They only well, okay, no, Modricroft makes an adjustable drum carter. Oh, do they? That you can actually get different <clears throat> um, drums for. Most people don't Don't own, care that much. Or own that many drum carters. But you would, I mean, if you are really going to get picky okay, and make beautiful so, bats. I'll add this last little bit and then I'll show you how to use your packer brush. Um, hopefully without taking fingers off. <clears throat> see, see how this is still lumpy? It's been through there once. It's, it was a tight lock. And you'll run into that. But it'll even out. It goes around, and all of this that's left on the, the liquor, bra liquor, you have a choice whether you're going to make felt balls or cat toys or spin it all lumpy and crazy. That is your choice on what you do. I tend to just toss it because it doesn't make me happy. Okay, so then I have my, my brush. This is a soft brush with metal pokies, and you brush it on. Some drum carters have one, a really stiff, like, paint 
brush that's actually angled and held there. This is not a fancy drum carter. This one's really old. It's a really old Clems and Clems. It's practically industrial. It is never going to break. The table will break. The table is breaking. That is the scariest part about this whole situation. We obviously need to bring her in a new table. I'm thinking with drum carting, I thought about this at, I don't know, 5 a.m. when I couldn't sleep because the puppy made me wake up. And he was conveniently back to sleep. Okay, so I packed this back on. They make tools for this too. <laughs> yep. But a screwdriver. But a screwdriver works in a pinch. Because, you know, this, like I said, comes with no frills. There is a gap here. That's, that's your gap in your um, carding cloth. And you just go through. You don't want to touch this any other spot because you don't want to get your carding cloth. You don't want to damage the tines on your carding cloth. Yep. So you just do this right here. So I, you know, then you turn your drum carter backwards and you roll this off, just like you roll it off your hand carters. This is a pretty bat. It is pretty. I just, we're just gonna keep giving lessons until we finally have two ounces on here. <laughs> the more wool you have on it, obviously, the easier it the comes The prettier off. the bat is. The prettier the bat is. Um, some people really love making bats. I really love spinning bats. I am not totally a lover of making bats. I will get on a tangent and make a ton of them. But then you have this lovely bat. If you, this is a nice textural bat. I, this is where I would leave it. Right. Some people would like would it like even it smoother. smoother. You can see the Romney on the back. If That's you the are first. blending or you want a really smooth bat, you would divide this into in half or thirds and you would sandwich it again through the drum carter. Um, and you pull it right down the middle, mm -hmm. stretch it out, send it through again, and then layer it more. Um, that does make it more blended and smooth. Some people love that. The other thing to think about with your drum carters, I'm gonna show them the filth that is under the drum carter. I don't know if they can see it. You, know, you can see it right there on the table. Yeah, that's from my band, but it does it all the way. There's VM right here. That's all kinds of VM. There's all kinds. There it is. That's the grody stuff that comes out of your wool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with a drum carter, all the grody stuff falls, falls, falls out. out. It's really it does make awesome. really pretty clean. Yeah. It is really fun. I can't drum card. I. That's one of the things that I don't do. Um, because it kicks off my carpal tunnel, not because I hate it. It's you lost, can you bring the other part of the thingy maneuver in? Okay, so then here we have the... Oh, I, let me get the handle, the base. The short, or the long draw. And you can see it's a little, actually a little fuzzier. It's not quite as controlled. <coughs> and then you see as I, if I just literally long draw it out, I'm not going to get the, the smoothness. So then you were going to show them spinning from the cloud. Yeah, it's my favorite. Okay. You're going to continue to hold them? Uh, well, no, I'm going to set them back down. Oh. Yep. I don't know this wheel very well. This will be I don't think you've ever spun on this, Sonata. Uh, maybe. Not for a long, not for extended amounts of time. Definitely not for a demo. Huh? All these well, you know. No time like the roll. present to, you know, totally I like do a wheel Sonata. review online. Right, I like the Sonata. I find it easy to use. Where's its hook? I don't know, over there somewhere. Wow, that survived the puppies and everything. It's always amazing when something survives the puppies. It is. Like we said, it's they're, they've reached that point in their development where they're like, I don't they're know. Almost four months old, okay? Like 13 year old kids. <sighs> Not quite. No, I think they're more like nine year old. Four year olds. They are, they climb the, they're, they're <laughs> climbing the curtains. 
and they're just trustworthy enough, you know, like you're letting forget. them dress themselves. Yeah. And they're they're like semi potty trained. Yeah. You forget. Bad. You forget that they're just that they're there. Kids. Okay, so my favorite way to spin Romney is I take it and I spin it in the cloud. So I just fluff it. <laughs> Heather's like, what the hell? No, I've done it that way a lot. That's how I spin most of my fleece. You know why? Because I don't like prepping it. Okay, I have no problem sitting and making a ton of roll eggs. I could get on a kick and do it, but then I'm like, I spin it and I'm like, yeah, well, that was fun. Yeah. I only like That's... spinning the roll eggs if I'm like blending. But if I'm doing just like one fleece, look at this lock. Isn't that a pretty lock? It makes me really happy to see the locks and then I just fluff them up. You're going to spin my garbage mm -hmm. on that bobbin? No, I'm going to switch bobbins. Actually, I can't switch bobbins on this wheel. Hey, do I have another wheel? The one over there. There's a different <laughs> rose. You can spin on my rose. That one has stuff on it, but I've got another but wheel. You could, there's a bobbin uh, no, right there. No, I've got a wheel behind me. I've got a wheel behind me. With nothing on with it? With nothing on it. Wow. <laughs> you guys get to see us spin on all the wheels. Okay, so I've like fluffed up this. They're really because asleep. just like older toddlers, if you wake them up now, they'll never go back to sleep again. They're all snuggled. Okay, well, one is snuggled up to the other one. The other one looks angry. She's angry sleeping. I love it when puppies angry sleep. <laughs> this is the prelude. Hi, prelude. She's a Saxon wheel. So far, all we've spun on are... Uprights. Up, upright castle style wheels. Saxonies are, you know, tilted on their side. They look like the antique wheels that we all think of when you say spinning wheel. I'm fluffing, I'm fluffing, I'm fluffing. Can't pull a hole. It's fine. Uh huh. This wheel has like a spot. That's a really wet spot. section. And yes, there's. And what I have in my hand is literally just. That's my waist. The waist from the carding. Oh. From the combing. For the combing. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I just have a bunch of locks that I fluffed. And I'm spinning it with a short forward draw. I'm going to spin this with a short forward draw too. Because so that's how I spin. I have no take up. Mm -hmm. Hey, there we go. So you see Danielle holds her hands completely different than I do. Her way is more ergonomic. Is it? She actually, yes, because you're, it's, theoretically, you don't hurt your wrist as badly. Um, oh, this is just how <laughs> I spin. That's how you were taught. And whereas I taught myself in my basement, Danielle went to a lesson. I had a lesson. A lesson. Which shows you you could learn how to spin any way, shape, or form you want. It's just up to Too you. Too much twist in my world. Too much twist in my world because I'm being... You're on the smallest world, too. Why am I on the smallest world, Heather? I don't know, because you flipped the bobbin. That might do better. That might... Like, this is really fast, and I'm not doing so hot. The Sonata has three speed settings, and it is set up like an old-fashioned um, Ashford. So they're on the front, which is kind of funky. It's the same way that this one is set up. This, Scotch this spins much more like a Saxony wheel than a standard. Yes, it's a fast. It's a fast upright. It's fast. It's a big upright too. Yeah. Okay. So when you're looking at wheels, the larger the big wheel, the wheel, the drive wheel is, the easier it is for you to make yarn as well, far as speed is, and the faster it can go. Right. Like because this. You have to put this less little. Effort. This little wheel, I think its drive wheel is actually smaller than yes, the Sonata's wheel. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> this prelude. What's the middle one? The interlude? We don't have one of those. We don't have the interlude. Is the interlude about the same size as... This interlude is like a 21-inch wheel. I want to say the, that is a 20-inch. 
that most people don't like Saxonies because of the space they take up. Um, they're and harder they're, to travel with. They don't travel well in general. I mean, they like, do, but you have to have a car that can haul it. I don't know. When we haul the wheels to the shows, the hardest ones to pack are the Saxonies. Yes. Everybody else is so much easier. Upright wheels used to be called parlor wheels. Because women would take them to the parlors and spin on them. And gossip. And gossip and talk to each other and have spinning days. That's why I actually, when when we went through all of, we, Danielle and I the other Saturday, went through all of the um, Kromskis that we have here. And my mom was like, which one do you like the best? And I was like, well, I like all of them in different ways. I really like the Fantasia for certain things. I think it's really good for a beginner. I really like, I really, really, really like their Symphony because it is a fast, fun wheel. Fast, fun wheel. It's like, on. it's like fast, driving a fast car. Right. It's like taking your Maserati out and, or your Porsche out. And but, you around. know, you don't always feel like driving a Maserati or a Porsche. Right. But I was like, but I really like, like as far as like an everyday wheel, I really like the Sonata because it fits in a bag because it, it folds. goes everywhere. It, I can take it anywhere. It's sturdy and it spins fast. I don't have to like it slow myself down. It does not spin like a travel wheel. No, it feels like a full on. Because when we had one here before, I spun a lot of it on... I spent a lot on it, um, and I kept using it for plying. I would spin on my rows and then ply on the Sonata. And I was like, wow, this is a fast little wheel. Because plying takes forever. Well, and a lot of times I have, I take, I have it set up that way. That way I don't have to swap my wheels back and forth. And I can literally spin from one and ply on another. It's like really literally cool. pulling off the bobbin. Off the bob like we don't yeah. even take the bobbins off. Exactly. You'll when see I us am out here really occasionally. spinning. I'm just whipping from one wheel to the other. That's a lot of fun. And we'll have wheels lined up. Yep. I mean, like seriously. That's why everybody needs That's why needs everybody needs more wheels. than one wheel. Right. No, seriously. That's why I originally got another wheel was like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Was because then I didn't have to stop and fix and switch how I was spinning something. Okay. I did. So the reason it, why I've gotten other wheels is because I like pretty new shiny wheels. Nope, I always like was like, now I just want all the wheels. Okay, that is now the thing. Well, they not. drive differently. Everyone is different for different reasons. Exactly, and Good. I kind of like that. It's kind of like having a car collection. It, sure. We're like being the Jay Leno's of the of the, the, the wheel, of the land. wheel land. Yeah, you know, you, you got to have a car for every. Well, and everybody is different. Like you need a we need a wheel for every wool. Like this wheel that I'm spinning on now is a wheel that I would use for demos a lot in public because I can spin on it and talk. It looks like a wheel. Yes, what and people the people think aren't about going. It. What are you looming? Right. They actually know that's a spinning, spinning wheel. wheel. Yeah. And it's a fun little wheel. It's, is it a wheel I would use every day? Probably not. But it's a fun little wheel. No, it's not your go-to here at the shop. No. She actually grabs the Symphony, which is the big one, more, mm -hmm. or one of the Modricrafts, and, or this, or the Sonata. Right. We just got the Sonata in. So we're just getting to know this one, this specific Sonata. Every Sonata is slightly different. They all have Every a different... Every wheel is slightly different. Oh, yeah. Because they're all made by somebody different. Yeah. No two wheels are the same because... And the wood talks to you. The wood that the wheel was made of, you have to talk to it. Because the trees have souls and sing songs. And you can, you can sit there and go, uh-huh, Heather, you've lost your mind. Until you sit down to a wheel that you've always <laughs> wanted. And you go... I really want this wheel and it just doesn't spin for you. And then you sit down to its twin sister. Same freaking shipment. Same wheel. Same wheel. And it goes and that one spins perfectly, but the one before doesn't. But it spun perfectly for everybody else. Yeah, or I for the other happen. person. It's I'm dead serious, it happens. 
And when I have it's people like that Harry are having Potter, problems, you know the, the wand. The wand picks this person. The wheel chooses his. The wheel chooses his spinner. Yep. Yep. So I'm totally like having fun with this. It, this is, does not make. I don't know. In my head, it's pretty yarn. It's chunkier. It's lumpier. We're going to show them in a second what it is, and then we will be able to show four different styles. Which we'll take pictures and we'll post them. And we want to see your guys' yarn. Right, because now you guys have seen all of these different techniques. Right, and and then we want to see your yarn and how you've chose to spin your Romney. And uh, um, if you're having any problems with trying out the different styles or we want to hear what your favorite is. Yeah, because that's because everybody has a favorite. And how I like to spin this may not be how you guys like to spin it. Right, you can try different techniques and don't be scared to try a technique for a couple, you know, turns of your wheel and then go, or your spindle, and then be like, oh, oh, I don't that like didn't that. work that well. That felt um, gross. And then, you know, and then try something completely new. Right. We did not show this on a spindle. We did not show this on a I spindle. Um, if will... anybody needs us to do a spindle one, let me know and we'll post we a have spindle. a spindle lesson didn't we do a spindle lesson no, we can send them yeah that link we have a spindle lesson i yep. did impromptu so if somebody needs a spindle lesson we can do that mm -hmm. um and there is no ugly yarn no all of these are really cool because it shows how different they are um next week we are doing border luster so again, we will wash it, and Border Luster is, is another long wool. Mm -hmm. It is different than Romney, and it spins different than Romney. It's really cool. It is. It's really cool. Um, and Romney is much more like the English Luster, which we learned about that. Mm-hmm. English... Border Luster will explore. It's a whole different... Right. Um, Border Luster's my favorite. Is it? Yes. Even wow. over Romney. Even over BFL? Yeah. Wow. I really border luster. I'm is my telling. Favorite. You tell people that. <laughs> you totally tell people that. I'm totally no, I'm dead serious. I would if I could only spin one fleece. One breed of sheep. Ever. Ever, I would be border luster. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna go through and we'll ply these and stuff. Yeah. So and we'll post pictures. Show. Um, show you guys. This is so fun. Yeah, it looks nice. We did it on all the different wheels so we can see which one they are. Okay, so here is the the two kinds of, of woolen. Of, of worsted. Worsted. Sorry. Yep. Woolen is woolly. From the combs. Here is the semi worsted from the carded preparation. Here is the scraps which is a true woolen here here is spun from the cloud which is very woolen and very art yarn like art like yep uh, it is it is like a woolen art yarn um it's very hairy yeah so let's see if we can show all three all of them at once probably not we'll take pictures we'll take pictures of all of these and we'll post them and we'll yeah and so yeah. you guys can see all the different preps mm -hmm. and all the differences of these wools right and we'll see you guys on tuesday live if again you, if you guys feel ambitious you can go ahead and wash your yep. your border lester it will wash the same as the wrong <coughs> right um exact same process as exact the exact same process as the romney we're gonna and so and we'll we'll touch base on after each of these after each of our spinning um give you a heads up on the wool to right. come because as we go on these fleeces are going to become different in their washing and washing methods right so um just giving you a heads up there right the the border luster and the bfl can be washed about like this yes but right. as we go into the other fleeces. Right. It's going to change up. It's going to change up. All right. You guys have fun. Have fun spinning. And let us know if you have any questions. We'll Bye. See you guys later. Bye.